Please welcome Dr. Sanaz Masumi. The Patient Safety Movement Foundation's Global Interprofessional Patient Safety Fellowship Program offers healthcare professionals a unique chance to deepen their expertise in patient safety. This year-long program combines virtual classroom sessions with a practical improvement project, allowing fellows to apply their learning directly to real-world challenges in their professional settings. This roundtable discussion features panelists who have participated in the Patient Safety Movement Foundation's Global Interprofessional Patient Safety Fellowship Program. They will share their personal experiences and insights on how the fellowship has empowered them to drive significant improvements in patient safety within their organization and regions. They will discuss the impact of the program on their professional growth, the implementation of safety initiatives, and how they have been able to create a culture of safety in their respective workplaces. Please welcome Afifa Manavar, Natalia Camargo, Angie Mercy, and Luis Torres to the stage. Please welcome Sanaz Masumi, Afifa Manavar, Natalia Camargo, Angeli Mercy, and Luis Torres. I have the pleasure of moderating this roundtable um, discussion. Um, Thank you, Angie, um, FIFA, Natalia, Luis, for joining us at the 11th Annual World Patient Safety Science and Technology Summit. FIFA has traveled all the way from Pakistan, Natalia from Brazil, Angie from Philippines, and Luis from Mexico. Each one of you has flown long distances to be here, and I'm delighted to see you all. Without further ado, would you please introduce yourselves and provide an overview of your organization and your role within your healthcare system. Can we start with Luis here, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate. My name is uh, Luis Torres Torija. I'm from Mexico. I'm a physician by training and a patient safety uh, passionate, you can say. Uh, currently, I'm serving as a research analyst of global health policies at the University of North Carolina. I'm an ambassador of the patient safety movement in Mexico. And I'm also working with the Patient for Patient Safety uh, US. In the daily basis, I work um, across healthcare organizations in Mexico in quality improvement projects. Uh, we work to uh, foster collaboration and improve uh, patient safety culture across Mexico. Hello to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Natalia Camargo. I'm from Brazil's largest city, Sao Paulo. I have always worked as a nurse in the Brazilian Unified Health System. My experience for 10 years uh, was at an ambulatory operation room, epidemiological surveillance, and health promotion and prevention. For the past three years, I act as a quality and patient safety specialist, and I'm currently work, working for one of Sao Paulo's social organization, partner, uh, municipal partner. The organization manages almost uh, 200 services from various complexities. I'm placed at One Day Regional, and I'm more focused in the uh, services with the primary and secondary levels of care. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for inviting us, and it's really a great opportunity for me uh, to participate in this uh, 11th Global uh, Patient Safety Movement Foundation. And it's really a privilege for me that I have been enrolled in the Patient Safety Fellowship Program. So my name is Afifa Munawar Baloch. I've been, uh, basically my background is a nurse. I have experience uh, for 14 years. I worked as a clinical nurse, as a nursing lecturer, Currently, I'm serving with the WHO country office Pakistan for the last eight years, and I'm a dedicated uh, patient safety quality officer. And uh, so for somehow, I have uh, uh, other areas on my plate related to the hospital sector and health workforce. Considering this role, I'm responsible for, the, uh, for enhancing 
the patient safety and quality in uh, Pakistan. And uh, I'm also responsible for uh, to, to collaborate with the health care workers, institutions, as well as the, uh, you know, the government bodies and other health care workers so that uh, we can develop and implement the patient safety policy strategies. Uh, that aim is uh, that we have to strengthen the role of patient safety in Pakistan. We can create the best practices so that uh, our healthcare worker to implement uh, the, the standards what we have developed in uh, Pakistan. So considering that uh, I contribute uh, the role of uh, WHO missions, that uh, to strengthen the healthcare system in Pakistan by achieving the universal health coverage as well as the zero harm by 2030 so that we can build a system for the betterment of the people of Pakistan. Okay. That's great. Hi, so I'm Ange Porto. I am from the Philippines. I am an obstetrician and gynecologist. I graduated from the University of Santo Tomas in Manila with um, BS Psychology as my pre-med course, and I have been in Region 2 Trauma and Medical Center. It's a government um, institution. It's a 306-bed capacity um, DOH retained hospital, and um, I was assigned chair of the Patient Safety Committee just last year, so we are still um, doing baby steps. Um, writing on the policies, the SOPs. We are new to um, the concepts of patient safety. So, yeah. It's wonderful to yeah. have you all here. Thank you for sharing your background with us. As you can see, we have a remarkable diversity in our fellowship program, thanks to Dr. Peter Lackman's incredible efforts, ensuring that we include candidates from various regions each year. I'm sure our audience is eager to know which aspect of the fellowship program you found most valuable in helping you create a safer environment within your healthcare organizations. Yeah, I, I think um, it has given us a structural framework to address these complex system challenges through evidence-based practices and leadership development, I can say. Uh, learning from, from global experts, I think, uh, has helped us to really understand critical factors like human factors or uh, reliability theories that we can implement in today's day, uh, basics in our organizations. The reality is that these learnings has empowered us to really make meaningful changes in our specific region, no matter the program or the strategy or even the type of organization that we're looking for. So I think that's some of the main uh, insights and positives that we have in, in the program. The main aspect for me was to create the ability uh, to do objective reflections and has been a continuous practice for me thanks to Dr. Peter. And when we reflect, we start uh, questioning, we become more critical, and we are more aware of the whole process. And we actually notice things we couldn't see before. So for me, after reflecting, I open my mind to see a big picture, while I can still look to the details, so it makes a huge difference for me. Uh, it really has helped me going from um, theory to practice, uh, so from thinking to real acting. Now I understand I should act right away instead of waiting uh, for the big moves to happen. So work with, you, why, sorry, work with what you already have in hands instead of waiting for maybe resources or other things to happen around you. And that gave me the feeling that all situations are worth it to work on. And the other aspect was the opportunity to get along with people from other realities, with different perspectives, and from different health categories. And even apart, we still can find similar issues, which I found very interesting. 
and that turned each discussion very rich and with the possibility to learn and share with the whole group. Well, uh, related uh, to me, so the Patient Safety Fellowship Program provided me deep understanding of the invaluable insight and tool, which has been instrumental to fostering that how we can build a uh, safer culture in uh, my country, even uh, a neighboring country. Uh, in that aspect, I learned uh, from a different topic, although I, I'm a responsible for the patient safety and I've been uh, uh, working with the WHO, but the topic which I learned during the, during the fellowship program, it is, believe me, it changed my capacity related to the co-production. I, I, I was aware, but the in-depth I learned during the fellowship program. So now I'm changing the culture by giving the training program to the healthcare worker at the hospital level as well as at the PSC level. If we focus on the system theory and the system uh, engineering, in a yesterday uh, session, Dr. Marcus has highlighted that uh, system engineering has a really impact to get the outcome of the disease. So if I, if I focus my country, so I have been assigned to, it's just like a simple example, that I have to conduct the emergency unit assessment of a public sector hospital in Islamabad, that is a capital. So as you know, Pakistan is a emergency prone country. Sometimes we have a flood, the other time we have a measles outbreak, then sometime malaria, cholera. So, and uh, most of the time we have a massive emergency as well. So, as you all are aware that emergency unit is a hub to receive the patient. So when we conducted the uh, assessment with the support of the international expert, we assigned that it was a recommendation that emergency unit should be a separate dedicated. So government of Pakistan received some fund from the JICA. When they have developed, cons constructed the emergency unit, you know what happened? The, the first aid room was the end of the emergency room. So, you know, if, if the patient is coming who, is, uh, who has a really golden hours to survive his life, so he will come in the emergency door, then all the way across, the, across, he will cross the corridor. In the end, he will receive a first aid emergency. So this is the role of the system engineering. If at that time they have hired a healthcare architecture, he will think, that um, uh, first stage should be within the two seconds, within the two minutes, so that patient can receive the, um, uh, the, the services. So <clears throat> then uh, uh, if uh, the related to coming back to the point that uh, the safer environment, yeah. Uh, fellowship program provided me opportunity that we have to create the safer environment within the healthcare services at the hospital level if we focus at the meso level, micro level, as well as the hmm, macro level. So being responsible of research at the WHO level, so I have been working with the macro level, micro level, as well as uh, the uh, uh, micro level. So we built a system through the training program, whatever I am learning from this fellowship program, at the same time I'm implementing uh, uh, here I would like to give one other example. That is, a, I think, big achievement for a low middle income country who has a really very uh, constraint in the, fund, in, in the source of the fund. Because uh, if we focus uh, on the pa government of Pakistan is providing only 4% of uh, total, 4% uh, GPT out of a total fund for the health. So most of the fund goes to the salary of the healthcare worker. So there is no dedicated person uh, at the central level as well as at the hospital level. So based on that, when I, what, what I'm learning through this and uh, the other, uh, other project that is a global patient safety uh, collaborative that is supported by the UK, Britain government. So these, um, these both are working uh, uh, means uh, I'm getting uh, some support from the theoretical side some support from the Global Patient Safety Collaborative and implementing at the uh, government level, guiding them 
so that we can strengthen the system of the, uh, of the patient safety at the hospital level. Now people are pretty aware we, we have implementing the uh, WHO patient safety friendly hospital framework. So now they have a system. So yeah, they are implementing and we are improving uh, the safer healthcare uh, within the hospital, uh, not uh, on the hospital, as well as at the PSC and community level as well. That's wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Angie, what are your thoughts? So the fellowship has given me, as I have said in, in um, the Dr. Peter's presentation, it has been um, transforming us into um, more confident leaders. See, um, your voices, the WHO, this global call on reducing um, harm worldwide has, um, has the DOH respond to this call. So we are the appointed officers that has to carry out this um, strategy. So me being appointed as the chair of the patient safety unit, at that time, um, I was, um, let's say, um, it was all new to me. So I needed some um, organization, your help. I needed your help so that I can build this um, confidence to, to um, handle the unit, to do those or um, carry out those strategies that, that we have to, to um, uh, to do to reduce this um, medical errors, this avoidable harm. So it has um, really um, been inspiring to to hear, to um, to um, inspiring to to have you as um, say um, a good foundation of all this theories, how, no matter how profound it is, what I learned in, in, in this um, um, fellowship is that you have to, even if it's, uh, there's a lot of theories, it's really complex, you have to do one step at a time. Yeah, so. That's wonderful. Um, Finally, could you share how the knowledge and the skills that you have gained uh, through the fellowship program have had an impact beyond your healthcare system and benefited your broader region? Yeah, totally. I, I can summarize, as Natalia was saying, with the part of the reflections, uh, in, in three sentences that uh, I had during my uh, time in the, in the fellowship, and I have it right here, because one of them is, uh, no matter how much we think we know, there's always more to learn. And this one was one of my peers' uh, comments every session. And it was really interesting because every session after we finish, we have more questions than answers, and I say it, in a positive way, because it really creates that reflection to really understand our gaps and work to really start cutting these edges and, and sharing these experiences. The other phrase is local is global, and you may have heard it in, in different aspects. I think this is one of the main strengths of the program, to be able to connect with uh, global leaders uh, because, yeah, we understand that the challenges may vary based on the region, but also we understand that we have many of the same issues. So to be able to learn the different strategies, to learn the different context, and most important, how we can adapt these strategies to fit in our local region and that comes a, a long way and of course having this global support has been fundamental to make meaning, meaningful changes and the last one that uh, it's, it's from Peter is like if it was easy we wouldn't be here and that's, that's a fact uh, coming to an industry, a complex industry like uh, healthcare 
uh, it can be challenging and exhausting. So to be able to be empowered and really work in skills like resilience, it, it has helped us to really promote uh, a culture of safety and, like I say, make meaningful changes uh, to our region. I just want to take a quick uh, time to thank uh, Joe, uh, Sanas, uh, all the patient safety movement, uh, foundation, government, board, the faculty training, uh, Dr. Davila uh, leading the efforts in Mexico, and really all the Mexican group that came together that are really pushing uh, patient safety in our country. And of course, Dr. Peter Lackman for our mentorship and, and guidance during this program and to continue uh, creating this community of uh, patient safety leaders that hopefully it can grow through the years. Uh, the final project helped me to create a tool to develop communication considering the diversity of the public that it's attended and their vulnerabilities. We recently received the national accreditation certification and the fellowship has been of a big help for me regarding equity, centered care, adverse events, and evidence-based medicine. I face a lot of challenges because the patient safety culture is common in hospitals, but it's totally new for this kind of uh, services. They are physical rehabilitation, mental health, and basic care units. They are usually small structures with a small group of mood professional teams that also act in the community, dealing with social factors that also impact in people's health. So we needed to adapt many of the processes to be able to establish standards. In this kind of low complexity services, we still um, find potential to severe harms and that can be underestimated. So I believe that every little improvement that is made, it's important to turn the whole system safer for our users and workers and in my case, an improvement has a huge impact. Once we are talking about a population of 12 million in the city that have total free access to all those public services. So I'm really glad and optimist with how things are escalating. There is still a lot to be done, but I'm very excited for the next steps. I'm truly grateful for the fellowship experience. And I want to thank the uh, patient safety, uh, safety Movement Foundation for the opportunity. Thank you for all the team for the support. Thank you for the other fellows and thank you all for the attention. Well, as far as related to me, it is indeed I learned a lot, the skill which I developed and uh, the project uh, right now, because our, our fellowship program is currently ongoing, uh, it is uh, bringing me, uh, bringing a huge impact, not for, uh, uh, for my capacity, for the whole system of, I can say, uh, Pakistan. Through this fellowship program, I can be a change agent for the patient safety, then automatically further the healthcare worker, the community worker, the uh, the, the persons uh, who are working at the uh, at the PSC level, they will bring uh, marvelous changes uh, to reduce the medical error in Pakistan. So through this program, it is uh, no doubt I learned from my fellows through sharing the experience. Whenever we are having an assignment to su to submit the assignment, so we to touch in base, and uh, we can discuss. Look, the, what situation we have in Pakistan, how it's going in Philippines, how it's going in Saudi, Lebanon. So it is bringing uh, really indeed impact. And uh, on the other hand, uh, but, uh, whatever, um, I gain knowledge. So uh, because my project is related to strengthen the medication safety, that is a third challenge, global challenge, uh, to reduce the medication error. 
So uh, I learned about how we, how we can strengthen the hospital pharmacies by segregating the high alert medication by LASA. Now, nowadays it's, it is uh, uh, LASARA, localized sound alive and read alive. So I learned then, you know, we have been collaborating with six other countries. So I shared these things with Sri Lanka. So now they are working. Look, so this is a big achievement. So I am learning, I'm sharing experience with other countries. So they are doing same work. So uh, this is uh, another one that, uh, that is also a global uh, agenda, engagement of uh, patient for the patient safety. So I know that so the collaborating center is working very well. So uh, then I contacted with them. So they, they provided the tool. So uh, I'm implementing uh, within our model hospital who are working. We have a few model hospital then uh, whenever they will achieve the some um, standards and they will get the accreditation, automatically we will replicate to the other uh, hospital as well. So uh, in a nutshell, we really, uh, through this program, we, uh, we got to know what are the deeper uh, what understanding of the patient safety priorities and what are the, what are the uh, top notch uh, principle of the patient safety. So I'm highly grateful, Dr. Joe Kiani, and uh, Dr. Sanaz, Dr. Of course, Dr. Michael, Dr. Ramsey, not but but least Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Peter. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> because every month we are getting a reminder. Look, after two days, it's your assignment. You have to do it. And we took hours and hours. We spent whole night by reading the articles. And we submit the assignment, the project, the reflection. Within a few hours, we, are, we receive the feedback. <laughs> There's a no matter on the weekend, on the holidays. Uh, Dr. Peter is active every time. <laughs> so I do thank you so much. So in the past year, um, being appointed chair, uh, we were able to come up with um, uh, accredited manual of the patient safety committee and we have been drafting the fall prevention um, medication safety policies in our hospitals so um, also it has been a year now that we have established the reporting the, the reporting and learning system and um, we are also doing um, capacity building. We are equipping all our employees with uh, this um, patient safety uh, concepts um, because this is re relatively new for most of us. So we are um, uh, doing orientations. We are doing, um, we are participating in, see here, this is your 11th summit, but in the Philippines is our first yeah, it's our first summit. So it's it's um, your hard work here. Um, it's resonating in 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 parts of the world you don't know. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you so much for your hard work here. Of course. Okay. Thank you. To wrap up, I just wanted to say a few words. Uh, they all flew double digit number of hours to be here with us. And that is really, really precious. And also that's a testament to this incredible leader, Dr. Peter Lachman. Yay! such an outstanding individual and I also learned a lot from Dr. Lachman and from all the absolutely amazing articles that he finds and he shares. And I also learn as you read it, as we try to teach different sessions, we also try to learn and educate ourselves and be able to contribute to the reflections that um, you share with us on every session. Um, so I wanted to thank each and every one of you for joining us here. It has truly been a pleasure to be able to see you, meet you in person, Zoom and team are absolutely great uh, tools that they use every day, but just being able to give them a hug and see them as real people here was a different experience. And I very much appreciate the efforts you took to join us here. 
before we say goodbye, I want to see if we would be able to have the pleasure of um, Dr. Lackman joining us, Mr. Kiani joining us, Dr. Dorkin and Dr. Ramsey joining us here so we can have a group photo with our incredible um, fellows here. Yeah.